Joining me in the room podcast for the first time fighting at Cage Titans on March 18th is or Elvis Hernandez. What's up, my man? First time on the show. Thanks for the time. Hey, boss, hello. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Excellent, my man. Well, I've been waiting to get a chat with you, bro. You know, looking at your career in the past, your amateur fights, you've had so many fights fall through. Um, but, you know, this is set in stone. You are making your pro debut on the biggest card in New England in the year, man. How you feel about taking that next step and fighting on a huge, huge promotion? I feel I feel great. Um, I feel I can't I can't complain, man. I feel I feel great. My way is great. Um, the way I feel, I don't have any injuries, which, uh, you know, it's a weird thing because you always got something going on. It's a toe, it's a finger, it's your neck. I, I, I'm, in, I'm, I'm in optimal condition right now. I, I feel good. My weight is good. Uh, um, everything, is, everything is working perfectly. Uh, you know, all my training partners are, you know, on top of me right now. I'm the only guy fighting in that car from my gym. So everybody's, you know, uh, turning all the guns on me and, and making sure that I'm ready, for, ready for the bow. Well, my friend, um, you made your amateur amateur debut a couple of years ago. Um, you started at heavyweight, and you are making your pro debut as light as middleweight. I'm sorry, dude. Let's talk about this progression from heavyweight to middleweight, man. Uh, you know, what was the decision to drop all the way down to here? Well, uh, to be honest with you, uh, I was never a heavyweight. <clears throat> what happened was I had many fights, like like that you said, I had many fights that, that fell down. People uh, would agree to a bow agreement and they, they, would, they would look at my Facebook or whatever, and for some reason they decided to not fight me. Uh, and that happened uh, approximately 10 times. So, and then Lars reached out to me one time, one of those times, actually Lars was helping me. And, uh, and, and he called me, he said, listen, man, uh, the guy that you were going to fight, they're not longer gonna fight you, they're gonna fight somebody else. Um, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, this is a guy, it's a heavyweight guy that nobody wants to fight. Um, I mean, you can fight. I mean, you you more than welcome to decline the fight, but that's pretty much what it is. You got to fight, and 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 you know, and, and nobody want to fight you, and this guy will fight anybody. So that's how the heavyweight the heavyweight fight came around. You know, uh, we ended up picking that fight because we I, I was I was choiceless pretty much. I got no choice, so I was like, yeah, I'll fight that guy. Um, fortunately enough, uh, it, it, you know, the fight ended up you know going my way, uh, even though the guy was a very talented heavyweight. Obviously, a true heavyweight. The guy was like 40 pounds bigger than me at the mm -hmm. fight. Uh, they and and you know we we did the best we could. We ended up getting the victory. Um, then after that, I went to my original weight, which it was 205. I had a couple of five at 205. Um, <clears throat> but the last time I cut weight to 205, I was pretty. I made I made 203 effortless. Like you know, I I didn't even. I didn't even have to sacrifice anything pretty much. So uh, I told to my team, I told to Lars, and we decided that if, if it was so easy for me to make 205, it's probably because I'm not a 205. The way the way that the game is set up right now, uh, people, people struggle to make weight. You know, everybody's struggling to make weight and that's part of the game. Uh, and if you're not struggling to make weight at all, uh, you're probably too small for that weight class. So that's that's what we decided that we that I was going to go down to 185, and um, and I'm doing very well. Uh, I'm not concerned. Uh, you know, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna make weight. <clears throat> I've never. I mean, I've been wrestling since I was a kid. Uh, I've been cutting weight since I was a kid too, and uh, I've never missed weight. Never, no once uh, since since I was 10. Uh, so I will tell you, oh, I'm not gonna miss weight neither this time. Uh, we're working hard. Um, you know, we. You know, we have we're working with the with the guys uh, uh, elevate. You know, shout out for those guys uh, doing a very good job with my diet and and uh, you know and, and my uh, supplements, uh, su su supplies and stuff like that. Um, you know, I have no concern at this point. I'm pretty, I'm pretty, you know, I'm pretty confident I can make 185, and uh, I'm pretty confident I can, you know, I can beat anybody at 185. Um, I'm not a small 85er. That's not a secret to anybody. I'm gonna be, you know, one of the, 
uh, probably stronger eighty fivers out there uh, because I'm a naturally bigger man, and and that's what everybody's looking for. It's not that I'm, nobody's hiding that fact that everybody's cutting weight to be the bigger guy because when a good big guy faces a you know a very good small guy, normally the bigger guy has the advantage you know he end up even though the other guy could be even a little more skillful than you the other guy can be you know better than you just point blake better if you're bigger sometimes that's just enough to be him well let's uh, talk let's talk a little bit about the the you know where you got your start you talked about wrestling and you've been cutting weight you've wrestled you know basically your whole life how did you get into mma i mean you got into mma later in your years here, almost, uh, you know, almost in your 30s. Um, how did you, uh, you know, flick that switch and go from, you know, wrestling and jump into MMA so quickly? So I, I wrestled, like I said, I wrestled till the first year of college in Cuba. Then, you know, I went to, uh, you know, I went to the army. I went to a rescue school in Cuba. I like car school, school, and then, you know, I started, you know, doing like I was in a rescue team in a resort and stuff like that. You know, I just went about life. I didn't, you know, I always, that was, that was my first passion was wrestling. You know, I did nothing. I, all the kids were playing and I was wrestling. All the kids were, you know, watching the cartoons in the morning and I was running. And, and, and that was my life from 10, 11 years old till I was, I don't know, 18, 19. Uh, then after that, you know, I choose a different career path. Um, you know, I meet my wife, uh, then my girlfriend in Cuba. She went to visit uh, Cuba and she meet me over there. And, and uh, you know, we fell in love. She brought me over here to the United States. Um, you know, I got, I got here, uh, fortunately. Uh, you know, I had a pretty good setup. It was my family, you know, but unfortunately, at the same time, uh, you know, I had to work. I had already two kids with my wife. And, and, you know, I just went about life, you know, doing my, the best I could out of this opportunity that was given to me. Um, and and then once that I got, but that always was in the back of my mind, you know, sport, wrestling, fighting. I was I was, I was one of those guys that, that would watch the fights every weekend, you know. I was yeah. just you, me, all the people that watch the fights every weekend. They cannot wait for Saturday to get to <laughs> see who's going to fight. And, 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 and the trash talk and following the people, the, what are they saying? And then one day, uh, my wife, uh, I was upset about a Joel Romero fight. Okay. I was like, this goddamn guy, man, <laughs> he's not shooting. He's not doing what, what's going on with this guy. And my wife, uh, my wife, I remember my wife told me, I said, you should do it. I mean, if you think it's so easy, <laughs> then you should just go ahead and do it. I was like, fuck, I can do it. I'm pretty sure I can do it. And, uh, and she, and, 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 and then a couple of weeks went by and, and, and that thing stuck on my mind. I was like, Hmm, I really got to do this. And then I started looking for a gym and, 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 you know, I found a gym, but the problem with martial arts is you, you have a lot of good gyms and you have a lot of those gyms that are just business it's just those gyms that you go in, you get in there and they just about doing their business and they just about doing their own thing and they don't care really about the athletes and they are, they are, you know, they are dated. They got this uh, Bruce Lee and bowing thing. And I come from a wrestling background. I don't bow to a man. That's it. That's it. You know, that's it. It's a, it's a piece of equipment. It's like you grabbing your gloves, your boxing gloves, and kissing them. It's, it doesn't make any sense. It's not going to make you any better or any worse. I'm not going to bow the man. I'm not, I was born and raised in Cuba. I don't know what bow is. It's just a Japanese culture thing. Uh, you know, I, in order to present my respect, I show up, I train hard, you know, I give you my hand, I look at your eyes, I tell the truth. That's how I present my respect. I don't, I don't bow, I don't know what bow is. I don't, I don't know, I don't, I'm not Japanese. I'm, I, don't, I don't know nothing about that. So I went to a couple places that were like that, and guys were, you know, every single time you step into the mind, you got to bow. When the sensei comes in, you have to bow and kiss his kids, and, and you know, the whole, the whole deal. And, and then I was like, maybe this is not for me. I'm not, I'm not, just, I'm just, I don't have, 
I don't have that. That my my culture, we will get to the you know to the mat. We will play. We will wrestle. We will you know train as hard as we could, and then we will kiss each other, hug each other, and wait for the next day to come. That's it. <laughs> uh, when you have a culture where it's a main guy, and then everybody's below him regardless to you know whatever he say if he say you know jump out of a bridge you jump out of a bridge you, no, no 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 when when i train one of the things that i love about my gym is that when i train uh if if i get to casey to mantis to any of my coaches and i go say wait yeah, yeah I, I understand what you're saying but why and they will go oh the reason you know you got to keep your hands out is you know you throw a kick you got to keep your hands out because they can return something Okay, that makes total sense. I'll do it every single time. But if I come to you and you tell me, well, why should I keep my hands up? And you go, like, well, that's just the way it is. I was like, no, 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 I'm not a dog. <laughs> yeah. I'm not your daughter. You can't tell me that's just the way. No, I'm a, I'm a fucking human. I'm a, I have a brain. I'm a human being. I, I want to know the reason. I want to know the reasoning behind what you're telling me. I also want to know how do you came up with that. I don't. It's just not, you know, blind trust. That's not the way it works. No. No, because I'm putting my heart, my, you know, my time, my sweat, my effort, my dreams, everything into this. I need to know what is going on. What is, what is your reasoning for you to, to tell me the specific thing to do? So that was part of the, the, the reason why I couldn't, you know, stay in some of the gyms. And I keep bouncing around gyms, you know, and I would go to a gym, have a situation in that gym, just get out of the gym. And, and go to another gym and like that, I bounce around for a couple of years, man, just on and off, on and off. Then I found Casey. And as soon as I found him, the first thing that, that struck me about him is that he came over and, you know, and I look at everybody and he has a, he had a gi on it. And I was like, oh, fuck, here we go. <laughs> I was like, oh, my fucking God, I'm out, I'm out. I mean, I'm not going to be rude to the guy because yeah. I'm, I'm, I grew up in a culture where respect, you know, my father's, uh, have me, my parents have me when when they were you know old already. So I am you know I'm the last shot. What the, uh, they call the last shot. Me so too. <laughs> my father always told me it was an old man. I mean, my my father had me when he was almost sixty. So wow. you can imagine. Um, you know, I grew up in between old people, in a very in a very you know in a very uh, conservative culture, and. Um, and, and and respect goes first and, and I was I'm not gonna disrespect this guy. I'm not gonna, you know, just look past him, but I'm not looking forward to to have one of those kimonos on. I'm, I'm just not <laughs> you know, I'm not. And then, you know, when I started talking to him, I was like, listen man, I come from a wrestling background. I wrestle a little bit in Cuba, this and that. I told him a little bit, you know, about me. And he goes like, Man, that's great. I love it. I'm a wrestler too, and I think that you're gonna fit just perfect here. Your wrestling is gonna give you a, 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 an unbelievable advantage over all the people that just start, and 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 really encourage me, encourage me. I was like, man, that's that's what I want to hear. I thought I thought the same thing. I thought, I mean, the the, the years and years of of working out, and wrestling, and and knowledge, and, and competitions, and national in, in Cuba, and you know, and all the you know, and going and training the national team in Cuba. I, th I thought that would mean something for somebody, and and finally somebody comes and tell me what I what I kind of want to hear. Um, I was almost hopeless at that point. Mm -hmm. At that point, I was like, you know, if, if that wouldn't work, I, I wouldn't be sitting here with you, obviously, because I would have never fought. Um, and and he told me that, and the rest of the story, you know, I just started training with, with Casey one-on-one uh, -on -one pretty much, you know. He, he took me under his wing, and, and, uh, and, and, and you know, and, and since we have the same body type, the same yeah. way that we are both wrestlers, I pretty much adopted his style. Uh, and, and, and that's been, that's been my way to go, you know, take downs, get on top, beat them up. That's it. That's what I do. Now, uh, now when you walked into that gym till your first amateur fight, uh, what was the timeline there? Well, it, it wasn't, it wasn't that long. I think it was, it, it was, well, it was long. It was, it was like two and a half years. And the reason is a year later, I was ready to fight. A year, a year and two months later, I was 
already on weight. I was already good. I've been training for a year and a half. I already wrestled. I was already a blue belt. And 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 uh, it's most people will think, well, that's not enough time for you to, yeah. But I wasn't. I mean, not to brag about myself or nothing, but I wasn't the typical guy that, that walk into a gym. Like when I when I when I walk in there, I have ten years of wrestling yeah. on my, you know, on my back. So as soon as they start explaining and I start, you know, learning about jujitsu, it just it sink right in my mind. It just everything fit right through. I was like, oh, this is this is what it is. Like now everything makes sense. So quickly, I became a blue belt. I start competing as win competitions as blue belt. Um, you know. And then it was just time to fight. And then we start, you know, we got ready, you know, we got the first fight. The day of the weigh-ins, actually three hours before weigh-ins, you know, I'm already, you know, dying, dehydrate, you know, really it's my first time down to 205. You know, I'm like 208, I'm ready to go to the sauna with John, my training partner, shout out to John. Um, and 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 they give me a call. I was just getting ready, getting dressed, you know, pretty pretty hydrate. They give me a call. They go, "Hey man, um, just so you know, uh, your opponent is not answering the calls, anything like that. He doesn't. We don't know anything about him. Um, he hasn't, you know, picked the phone or nothing. If you want to drink a little bit and eat a little bit, you probably, you know." Just keep keep yourself around way in case somebody else. Then they call me an hour later. Go, like, listen, show up to the weigh-ins, <clears throat> just within ten pounds, and uh, we have a, dip a different opponent. So I was like, great, I'll get it. I don't care who it is. I just want to fight. So I show up to weigh-ins, and the guy did the same thing. He didn't pick the phone. He didn't show up. He didn't do nothing. And and I was so you know I was so so disappointed because. It was my first fight ever, and and I put so much yeah. hours of training and effort, and and it was I was in an unbelievable shape. And then after that, I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, we don't, I don't think we have enough time for you to <laughs> tell you the next ten times. Yeah. I mean, two of the times it was my fault to be honest, because one of the times I had an appendicitis, I had surgery, so it was not that I could have done. That was like two weeks before the fight. And one time I got injured at the gym. I got uh, my lip got split, uh, and you know I got like 17 stitches on my lip, so I couldn't fight neither. So that was the two, the twice it was that was my fault pretty much. Um, but then it was another seven, eight times that people just pull out. Yeah. Well, just... well, 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 or Elvis. I mean, I know you know you talk about ten fights falling through. You actually your last amateur fight that you were supposed to have. Um, you were supposed to fight for the, the CFFC, uh, what, was it the light heavyweight amateur title or was it a middleweight title for them? It was a light heavyweight title, 205 title. And did that, yes. did that fight fall through a couple of times also? Yes, uh, that was, uh, actually the first time I fought, uh, on heavyweight, that was a fight that fell through. Um, they choose a different opponent, um, and you know, Lars come and say, "Listen, these people shoot a different, a different, a different opponent. We just have this heavyweight guy that nobody wants to fight. The other guy was in the same position I was. Nobody wants to fight, so I fought the guy. Then the second time, so after that I fought again, and then after that we had a second opportunity with the same guy. Uh, his name I think is Luke Fernandez. Um, and then that time I got injured. Okay. Um, my my MCL, uh, I got a, an MCL tear, and I was out for like two and a half months. Um, and then I was coming back, and I thought I, you know, I thought I could just rush it in. But then after a while training, I I quickly called Lars and told him what was going on. I was like, I, I can't, I can barely move. Like I'm, you know, I'm hopping around in one leg. I can't fight like this. So uh, it fell through our time because of me at this point. And then uh, we, we made it happen again, you know. Well, uh, They sent me the offer again. The, the same guy, now this is for a title fight. He was a title holder. Uh, and they sent me the opportunity again, which I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that they did it um, because, you know, it went to happen a couple of times. And they, they, you know, and this time I was ready. He was ready. Everything was good. And he got injured. He was the one that got injured this time. Um, I don't know the, the the details. I believe 
um, before the fight, he went to a tournament, I think. That might, he might got injured there. I don't know what happened. I don't know how he got injured. They just say he got injured. They pull out. Uh, at that point, at that point in time, I was like, I can't keep waiting. I don't, I'm, you know, I'm already 32. So I yeah. got it. I really have to, I got to go pro. I got to do my 10. Um, then they send, they send us an offer again, uh, for the same guy one more time, um, to fight him at 205, but we already talk and decide that we were fighting, uh, you know, we, we were fighting, at, uh, you know, at, at 185. And I was like, I will fight him. I got a problem with that, but I will fight him at 185. That's my plan. I've been tired and my weight is yep. down. I'm not fighting anybody at 205. I'm pretty much walking around at 205, more or less. And uh, they said, no, it was too low for him. And that, that, was, that was the end of the conversation. Well, here we are at Cage Titans on March 18th, making your pro debut, man. Big, big step, but it's 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 been a journey, and it's a step that needs to be done, man. Cage Titans, this fight is definitely going to go on unless something tragically happens to your opponent during, uh, you know, the next three weeks. But, bro, you're taking on a, a, a New England dude here. You're coming into town for your pro debut. You're going to be in someone else's backyard in Daniel Mola, who has actually made his pro debut for Cage Titans. He came away with a first down, first round finish. He's actually dropping down to 185 as well, I do believe. So both of you guys are basically making your pro debuts at 185 together. Like, what do you know about this guy? Do you know anything about Daniel? Have you watched any footage? I know he's a BJJ black belt, has tons of mat time. Uh, not many amateur fights. He started late in his career also in the MMA game. What do you know about this guy and how'd this matchup uh, come about between you two? Well, um, we were looking for a fight, me and Lars, and uh, and that was a, you know, we, we had a few, you know, a few, um, you know, um, you know, a few, few offers and stuff like that. But as soon as they would look at my name, there's something about... <laughs> I don't know something about me. I don't know if it's because I'm Cuban. Is is I think it's I think it's, it, it, I, think it's I think it's the size of your neck, bro. I think I think it's everything. You're just <laughs> a you are the Cuban gorilla, my man. Now, I think that's probably what deters people from wanting to fight you. <laughs> to be completely honest, if if I were to be which I am, you know, doing my my pro review, I don't, I don't have a lot of choice. I just don't. But if if I, if I had a lot of choices. I was, I wasn't going to choose me per se, you know, for my pro debut, <laughs> and I think that's what happened. We we went we went and 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 knock a lot of doors. Lars was working nonstop, uh, knocking a lot of doors, and and uh, people will be like, yeah, we have a 185 er boom. We will be like, yeah, we want it. We don't care who it is. Let's go, and they will go like, nah. No, no, no. <laughs> Till finally, uh, this was one of the doors that we knocked. And they, they, you know, they, they give us an opportunity, and we, we are happy to take on man. Um, I don't think it's an easy fight. We're not taking him like a target or anything like that. I think, uh, I think he's a strong guy. I think he's a strong guy, and I think, um, you know, he's a black belt in BJJ. That's as much as we know about him. Uh, we obviously we watch a few of his fights, so he did probably about me. Um, and. Um, yeah, nothing, uh, nothing bad or good to say about him. Uh, I just, I'm gonna bring my game. I'm gonna bring the best, you know, I got. Um, we're not underestimating him. We're not overestimating him neither. We're training just for him, and uh, I think it's gonna be a good fight. I think uh, his style of fighting is is uh, it, it, it goes in my favor uh, because I'm I'm a I'm a I'm type of a brawler, an engager, a wrestler. Um, and uh, it tends to be a little more difficult for me, people that get away from, from fighting, you know? People that, that are, you know, tall guys that get away, they run around. Um, it could be, it's nothing, you know, nothing complicated, but it's just, I like people that come forward and engage with me. It's more what I do also, right? So I think it's gonna be a very good fight. If it goes away, I mean, I, I've always fought like that. I, I don't, I don't, I don't go backwards. I don't, I don't know how I uh, go backwards. I train my whole life to go forward, to engage. Um, so this guy does the same thing pretty much. So we, 
we're not gonna change anything. We gotta do what we do. You know, I'm gonna go forward and I'm gonna I'm gonna go at it with them. That's it. Excellent, my man. Well, you're coming into New England, bro. This isn't your first stop in New England. You haven't fought here, but you did join your training partner, John Piersma, when he fought for his uh, title fight at Neff. Uh, you experienced the New England crowd, man. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I don't know. You know, Cage Titans is a bigger promotion, and, uh, you know, it, it, it's... It, I don't think it's going to be as hostile, but you're definitely going to be the outsider coming in. How was your experience and how was your, you know, thought on the New England crowd at Neff uh, when you, you know, you made your way here a few months ago? It was, it was, it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. They, they, they got on my nerve a little bit. I got to be honest. Uh, they, um, I didn't, I didn't know they were that hostile. They were pretty you know I, I i don't i don't i wouldn't say that that's the worst i've seen but it's out there yeah. they they were they were pretty hostile they were pretty personal and it got to a point where it got to me you know and i turn into a crowd and, and tell them a couple of things and they got you know arguing with me and john and calling john names and calling me names and i'm calling them names <laughs> and that was a whole fight like that uh, but when I look back at the whole thing, it was a beautiful thing, you know, that's the way it's supposed to be. Um, I love a passionate crowd. I'm not expecting them to rule for me or anything. I, I'm ready for whatever. I mean, they're not going to be fighting with me. I'm going to be in there with them alone. So it don't matter what they do. It doesn't, it doesn't, it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't make a difference if they, they say whatever they say. I mean, I'm just, I'm just going to take it on their boy. Well, 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 my friend, you, you spoke about you are the only competitor from your gym, Synthesis, that is on the card. John will be in your corner, I would imagine Casey uh, also. And you also have, um, I don't know if you cross-train at Bone MMA also, but... Yes, yes, uh, I do. All right, so you have Jacob, you have, um, uh, you have Jake... You have a bunch of guys going in there uh, from the Rochester, New York area, Synthesis, Bone MMA, man. So you do have, you know, a gang coming in with you, man. How do you feel about, you know, making your way to Plymouth Memorial Hall? And what are you expecting from that crowd and the atmosphere there? Well, it, it's going to be, like I said, I, I'm expecting, I don't know how hostile they're going to be, but I'm expecting some amount of, you know, uh, they 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 gonna they gonna be probably probably rooting for the other guy, which is not a problem for me. That's not it doesn't that wouldn't make a difference for me. I'm happy that you know my training partners are coming with me, even though we are we don't belong to the same gym. They to us are sister gym. Uh, we cross train with them all the time. They come over to synthesis. We go over to Bones MMA um, all the time. We do it every weekend, pretty much every week. Um, Bon, uh, Jake is, is, is a great guy, you know, it's a, it's a tremendous fighter, uh, you know, a very exper experienced guy. Um, it helps a lot with whatever, you know, we, we, we spar, we train, we go over wrestling and stuff. He's a great wrestler too. And I'm excited that I'm going over there with them. It's actually, I think it's an advantage for me because they have been there and, uh, the fact they're going to be there with me. Um, it's just, it, you know, you feel like you are, you know, you got your own crowd, you got your own team. Uh, the people that come to see them going to probably be rooting for me too. The people that come to see me going to probably be rooting for them. And that's, you know, that's the, we're going to have a little pack in there. It's not like we're going to be alone. And, you know, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to get there. Um, I don't mind New England. I like it. Uh, we have another sister gym uh over there uh in new england too and um it's ray's uh ray mma ray jiu jitsu is another army and you uh, uh you know sister gym that we have uh the owner of the gym is ray a great guy you know he, he also cross trained with us he just came over this weekend to help us with those, some stuff you know he helped me with some sparring rounds and and you know we went over uh some striking and some stuff some uh, uh you know stuff that I could use for the fight and whatnot. And um, I've been to New England before. Uh, before uh, that time that I went with John, I've been there to train with them, to cross train with them. And I love, I just I just love the, the atmosphere. I love the, 
the whole thing, you know, I love, I love how passionate people are there and, and, you know, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm ready, man. I can tell you, I can tell you how, <laughs> how excited I am. Excellent, man, man. Uh, well, just a couple of more questions, bro, and I'll let you get back to your day, bro. Uh, but, you know, what's left in, uh, what do we got, about three weeks or, or, no, yeah, just a less than, a little less than a month left in here. You know, what? what's training? What's your regiment now? Um, is it full throttle or, or, or is it, you know, maybe three, two, two weeks out you, uh, you really go at it? Like, wh where are you right now in your training with the guys? Well, we still full full throttle pretty much. We are um, um, we I'm training twice a day. Um, you know, I'm training very early in the morning. I'm training in the afternoon. Um, every training session is uh, I mean, there's training session, so it is like three four hours long. Um, I'm aspiring two three times a week. Um, I will cut down on the sparring probably a couple weeks before the fight. Uh, and then I will go down, not cut down in the amount of times that I was part, but probably cut down in the intensity. Um, I found out after the last time I was injured, um, I've been doing things different uh, and doing things more technical and more dynamic, other than being forcing, you know, my way in. Uh, me being a wrestling uh, a wrestler sometimes it does affect me in that part because my mentality is like go 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 to you. you can't move anymore and um, I've been getting older and finding out that sometimes smarter ways to do things will help you the same or even better you know um, and and that's what I'm doing. Uh, always before the fights I, I always got something you know it's either my ears or my neck or my knees or my an elbow or something or you got caught or something yeah. like that this time i'm in i'm in perfect shape like i i, I feel great my way is fine everything is fine i think a part of that is because i've been i've been training smarter and not harder um i'm still full throttle like i said uh, i'm gonna be cutting down a little bit two weeks before and then the last week uh, I already did everything I already put myself in a position this is the way I think I always put myself in a position where um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna be able to do the best I can to win whether I win or not I'm gonna do you know the best I can I just, I'm not hoping for the outcome I'm just hoping for you know the performance um, you can lose, you can win. Some of them are trying, some of them, are, some of them are draws. Even some of them are, you know, weird things that nobody, you know, you win and they like John they John to meet this one guy and then they they brought it back and, and now it's a not contact. So that even that can happen sometimes. Um, that's not my focus. My focus is on 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 the performance. I want to do what I'm capable to do. If the guy was better than me that night, that's okay. If I was better than him, even better. Uh, but my focus is is in do what I'm capable to do. Excellent. I want to get in there. I want to perform. So I, I I can I, I can perform. Even if I win and I didn't perform like I like I know I can, uh, it bothers me. It really gets to me. I want to get in there and do what I do and show what I can do, which which I it's, I think I haven't for some reason or the other, I haven't been able to show what I can really do. Um, that's what my partners keep telling me. It's like, man, you know, see you fighting and see you every day in the gym is a completely different guy. Like, you know, in the fights, you know, you have always win and stuff like that, but uh, you haven't had the time to really show what you got. And I think that this 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 might be a good opportunity to show how much striking I have to see how to show how much, how good of a wrestler and a grappler I am with this guy, and um and and to really show what I got, get better opportunities. Well, my man, that was going to be my last question. What do we expect to see from the Cuban gorilla on the 18th? But it seems like you just answered that question right there. I mean, you want to perform yeah. to the best of your ability. Is there anything you can add to that, to that what we should expect to see from you uh, at Cage Titans 58? Yeah, we, we, we're going to be we're gonna be looking for finish. You know, we're going to be looking for finishes. Uh, we've been talking about that. Uh, me, John, you know, Lars, uh, my coaches, Casey, Mike, 
Uh, in my last fight, they they told me the same thing. They told me you gotta stop, guys. You gotta you can't just you know cruise because, I mean you you such a good wrestler. You just get on top and just cruise on top of the guys and win fights like that. But we gotta we gotta is that's not enough. We gotta finish. We gotta finish. So that's what we're gonna be looking for finishes. You know we're gonna be looking to to knock this guy out. Or we're gonna do, looking to finish him on the ground. We're gonna we're gonna be looking. We're gonna be doing the best. I can to to finish it. I'm gonna do my best. If I can't, if it's tough enough and I can't, and then I can't, you know, but I'm but I'm gonna be I'm gonna be looking for a finish. Well that's what I'm looking for. Let me uh say one thing before I let you give you a shout out social media and thank yous to everyone, my bro. Um as far as Cage Titans walking in there, bro, you might be the outsider coming in, but the crowd loves performances, whether it's the losing fighter uh, or their hometown guy. If you perform in there, brother, and you finish Daniel in that cage, the fans are going to love you whether, you know, they're on his side or not. That's what they're looking for also. Uh, being, you know, a Cage Titans media guy in the past and being to so many of their shows, man, if you perform in that cage, they're going to love you, bro, and you're going to feel like you are at home in that cage, man. So congratulations on making your pro debut on the biggest promotion in New England and one of the biggest ones on the East Coast at this moment, man. They're, they're getting it done, and congratulations on a great bout and uh, making that pro debut, bro. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. I, you know, I love the whole, com the, the whole conversation with you, too. Um, you know, I can I can thank you enough. Uh, that's what we're going to be trying to do. Uh, we we trying to, you know, I'm, I'm from Cuba, so I got to get my... Uh, my fan base from you know here and the only way to do it uh, the only way to do it is is you know having performances you know you gotta you gotta i want uh the way i want to go out of that cage is uh you know the ones that i go out of the whole thing i want the the the, the you know the matchmaker or the the owner of the promotion or somebody to come to me and be like man we, we want you back we want you back that's what we're looking forward to do. awesome my man I lose them? Oh, no, you're right there. All right, my man, last thing. Give you shout-outs. I know we're trying to build up your social media, your Instagram and stuff like that. You know, Cage Titans is going to be throwing out a lot of freaking stuff in the next three weeks about this bout and so many bouts out there with your training partners, man. So throw your social media out there. Throw your thank yous. Throw your gym. Anything you want to throw out there, man, get it out there because eyes are going to be on you in the next three weeks leading up to this big, big uh, pro debut. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, you know, I want to, you know, shout outs to my gym, uh, all my sponsors and, uh, you know, all my training partners, uh, all the people that one way or the other, you know, are, you know, looking, looking at me and, and, and you know, looking forward to see me winning and stuff like that. Um, you know, I didn't grow up with none of these. So uh, that's why my social media, uh, you know, output is not the greatest. I'm kind of shy when it comes to stuff like that. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, I'm going to start doing my best to start showing a lot more of what I got in social media, especially in Instagram, which, you know, like I said, honestly, I just get in there, I watch other people's stuff, and I'm kind of ashamed to to really, you know, show off and stuff like that. It's just it's just the type of person I am. But, yeah, my social medias are Orelby Hernandez. Uh, it's in my Facebook. It's just my name. And the same thing, Orelby Hernandez is my my Instagram, and and uh, and like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can start putting a little bit more work, so the people that really want to follow me and see what's going on with my with myself and my team and and you know and my diet and all that stuff, um, uh, they they can you know they can they can have a little bit more uh, a little bit of a closer shot with me. Excellent, my man. Well, there will be a stream available for your friends and family back in Cuba to, to check out the live stream. So, you know, Cage Titans is going to blow you up on, uh, you know, March 18th, man. So congratulations again on making that pro debut. And or Elvis, man, we'll definitely chat after. I'm going to be talking to some of your training partners in the next couple of days about their bouts uh, at the same card, man. So, you know. Rochester, New York, in the house, coming to New England, man, and making their mark. <laughs> well, with that said, bro, thank you so much for the time. It's been an awesome chat, getting to know about your career and how you got started and, uh, you know, leading up to this big, big bout on the 18th, man. Hey, thank you so much, man. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. All right, Appreciate my man. You. you have a great day. You too, sir.